what's up? How you doing, baby? What's going on, boy? How's your day How's going? You, How's your day going? Uh, how about yours? Not too bad. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, you got a lot of tats on your hand. Let me see. Okay, that's pretty cool. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's a rose made out of hundred dollar bills. Cool. Infinity. Cool. That's pretty good. So yeah, so uh, so um, Mr. Finessen's here. <laughs> so why don't you uh, why don't you let everyone know? Um, do you uh, I wanted to as a quick question. Do you uh? Do you do producing and rapping, or just or just uh, like rapping and music and stuff? Yeah, I produce and rap. I made the beat for Finesse. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. But yeah, I made the beat for Finesse. Um, I had a little help along the way, but I made the meat and potatoes of the beat. Uh, I made the beat the champagne. Um, I made um a lot of beats. Remember that song "Bounce It" by Juicy J? Yeah. I made the beat to that and wrote the hook for. It. So. Yeah, I I like I went myself like a producer. I just more or less get lucky every once in a while and the beat sounds hard and like oh okay uh, and it's yeah. not working you know? yeah but, yeah uh, yeah my process usually um my best songs I usually just start with like a piano and guitar and I work out the song uh you know on a really simple level and uh I show the producer the chords and they usually have even better chords and um, they build a beat out and we make a song. That's generally how it goes. Cool, cool. Um, before we get into that, um, I just want to let everyone know who doesn't know about you. Um, you're affiliated with like Little Wayne and Cash Money and stuff. And uh, I first heard about you um, through watching Little Wayne. It was like probably six years ago I heard your finesse on Little Wayne's channel. So that's when I first heard about you through Young Money. But I just want to let people know, you know, Birdman and uh, Lil Wayne actually get $100 million checks. You know what I'm saying? They're really no joke. <laughs> they really get $100 million what? $100 million checks. They've really gotten that. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, What other artists did you work with? Why don't you let people know? You know, you said Juicy J. Who else have you worked with? Kevin Gates, J-Lo, Britney Spears, uh... Fucking, you name it, bro. Anyone and everyone, pretty much. Oh, okay, cool. Maybe, uh, not what like is... Kid, maybe not Bieber or Kid Leroy. Of course, there's a, a bunch I haven't worked with, but I've worked with Bad Baby. Um, I don't know. Do you do songwriting for them? Mm hmm. Oh, uh, okay. Wow, that, that's pretty interesting. Cool. So but let's start from the beginning because I haven't uh, heard your story and I, I haven't talked to you before. So, um, first of all, welcome to the channel. Thanks for coming on. And uh, and how did you get your name, baby? Um. Well, my name is Ethan, and um, like uh, you gotta think like I started uh, rapping. I, like I started out playing in like rock bands, like I guess what you would call screamo, emo, metal bands or whatever, you know. And um, back in the MySpace days, and so like um, a white dude who dresses straight out of Hot Top, like rapping, was like a joke at that point. You know what I mean? Like there was no thing as SoundCloud rap or anything yet. And um, um, outside of my band, like all my homies, you know, we saw me, we're in the streets doing shit we shouldn't have been. 
And so, um, I had this, like, alter ego of me being a rapper where I would, like, write, like, the hardest rhymes I could think of and record them. And I would drop the beat so my voice sounds like this, which, um, for lack of a better word, made me sound black. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, uh, my, so I started doing that, and my homies started calling me Baby E as a joke. And uh, so I just went with it, put it on MySpace for fun, named it Baby E, and like, um, I never expected things to get as serious as they did. And um, yeah, honestly, it's like the bane of my existence. I wish I would have thought of a better name, but <laughs> yeah, once you get it, it stuck with you. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's too late to change it now, I feel like, so I'm baby, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, for people who haven't heard you or haven't heard some of your newer music or what you do, how would you describe your music? Um, I would describe my music as, um, as, um, I wouldn't call it pop trap because that makes it sound lame. So I guess, um, you know, being someone who writes songs for pop singers and also some rappers, and you know, uh, those two kind of come together when I make music for myself. So I guess just like, um, I don't know. Radio trap, pop trap, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where are you from? Where'd you grow up and stuff? Um, I grew up in Florida. Moved around a lot. Uh, went to fourteen different schools in twelve years. Um, but for the most part, I grew up in um. Uh, Panhandle, Florida, like Pensacola, Marianne. There's this little town called Miana that I graduated from. And uh, my second home is uh, like Norfolk, Virginia, Virginia Beach, Virginia. I um, spent like half my life in Virginia too. Like coming out, I could have said I was from Virginia. No one would have batted an eye. Huh. I just felt like my, my family's from Florida, so. I should rep Florida, you know. I was born there, so. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, how, what was the first album you bought, and what do you remember mostly listening to as a kid? What was my first what? What was the first you know album you bought or CD, and what do you remember listening to as a kid growing up? Um, uh, the first album I ever bought. It was a tape, and it was Coolio, This Paradise. Okay, yeah, I, I had that back in the day in elementary school, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, elementary school, Coolio, Gangsta's Paradise. That was my first day. And then uh, the first CD I ever got when CDs took over was uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony and Art of War 2. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that makes a lot of sense that I do melodic rap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they were both melodic rappers. Yeah. Um, I forgot to ask you. Um, what did what did your parents do? Um, my father was a um. He was a Rolling Stone man. He's a drug dealer. Been out of prison a lot. He, he was a crazy guy his name was Slick um, and my mom she um, she's always been involved in like um, teaching in some sort of capacity she loves kids, she loves children she loves to help kids um, so yeah she works with a lot of kids does a lot of um, work with the ED students and things like that you know Oh, okay. Is your dad still around? 
Nah. Oh, uh, rest in peace. Oh, uh, okay. Um, my stepdad was, um, and he, he, I would say he was my father figure more than my father. And he, he was, um, he was in the Navy. And uh-huh. his fucking, uh, his nut asshole died on Father's Day, like, two years ago. Oh, wow. Rest in peace. Rest in peace to him. So, I was so mad. Yeah, it's not something. mad, but you know, it's like what the fuck. Huh. huh. So, uh, so how did you first get into music? Like, what were you doing? Were you just uh, like banging out an MPC, or were you just rapping a little bit, or how did, how did that all happen? How uh, old were you? All right. So in kindergarten, uh, they gave me a diploma, like a kindergarten diploma, and like my grandma still has this hung up on her wall to this day. It says, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" and it says, "Rock star." <laughs> so, um, like, I wanted to be, I guess, rock star my entire life. There was never a plan B never a thought of something else I wanted to do and growing up like uh, anytime there was an instrument around I was fucking fiddling with it and making noise on it and, um, I really liked the drums a lot and um, you know I didn't have the money growing up um, there my parents had five kids between the two of them and actually six and um so, uh, my mom was like, yo, um, like, in order to show me that you're serious about music, you have to do band class for a year in order to, like, show me that you're serious about making music. And I was so mad because in the band I was in, in sixth grade, they didn't allow sixth graders to play in the drum line. You had to do a year of like another instrument so the first instrument i ever learned was trumpet <laughs> and then uh yeah immediately like seventh and eighth grade i um transferred to like the drum line and did drum line and stuff which i'm really glad i did because i learned you know the fundamentals of music and stuff through uh-huh. that by ninth grade, I was playing in garage bands and heavy metal bands and stuff and playing shows around town and shit. Uh, I meant so, to ask yeah. you, did you ever uh, did you ever meet Skrillex? Because um, he was had a similar story about being in a rock band before he was a DJ and stuff. You know, I never met Skrillex, but what's weird is the last tour that I did with my band was with From First to Last, the band that Skrillex was in. Oh, okay, but Skrillex gotcha. was no longer in the band when we toured with him. Oh, okay. Yeah, my girl of 10 years is like um, really good, great friends with Skrillex. She knows him really well. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I like his music. Gonna... It's pretty crazy. <laughs> oh, Dude, he's a yeah. fucking legend. Like, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh my god, it's like I don't know that first DP Monsters and Sprites yeah. or whatever. That shit's crazy. Yeah. It's like the shit. Was... The shit with Diplo is pretty nuts too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, he continuously is making dope shit over the years, but I just remember that first, you know. Yeah. Whatever it was called, sprites and yep. mon- whatever. Yeah. That shit, like, uh, I'm not a fan, honestly, of dubstep or EDM or anything, but I remember the first time I gave that a shot, I was like, this is like some shit. Like, this yeah. guy is a, like, I would compare him to like uh, his. I would compare his compositions to maybe like a modern day Beethoven. Or yeah, me too. Yeah, do you like DJ Snake at all? Um, I guess I don't know who he is really. I couldn't 
name a song by Oh, him, okay. I like him. Yeah, I check him out. He... If you like Skrillex, I think DJ Snakes is just as good or better, if it might be. It's oh, different. Really? It's different, but yeah. He's from France. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll check him out. Yeah. Um, I know he's, like, doing well on the radio and stuff. I see his yeah. name everywhere. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, anyway, um, how did you... Uh, start rapping and get it to meet uh juicy J because he was pretty much the first person i've seen that you were working with or were you working with someone before that no dude um so uh uh how did i meet juicy J? Um, oh, wait, wait wait no no no. how did you get to meet juicy J? did you meet someone before that or who were you working with before that <laughs> no so this is how i got to meet juicy J. um I was living in Virginia, um, in like the same city or area, they call it the 757, It's or the seven cities, and it's basically just one big city with different names, um, but um, so anyway, uh, you know who Lex Luger, the producer is? I've, I've heard of him, but um, I haven't really listened to his stuff, or maybe I have, but I didn't realize it, but I've heard of him. Oh, you definitely have. Like, okay. Lex Luger, remember that era of rap where it was like, take some big meat, Larry Hoover. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Hallelujah. Yeah, of course. When that sound took off. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, you know, a lot of Waka stuff. Yeah. Um, it's a party, it's a party, it's a party. Oh, yeah, of course then I have, yeah. yeah okay. Lex, Lex Luger uh, doesn't get enough credit in my opinion, but he literally created, like, the sound of music that we listen to. The... <laughs> he created that with 808s under it, like... He was like the first and only guy to be making beats like that. And, um, I mean, people were doing similar things prior, but like what we know now as the trap beat um, was definitely created by Lex Luger. So, um, there was a time where, like, basically, if you had a beat from Lex Luger, like, that was pretty much like getting handed, you know. Uh, like Little Wayne feature or something. It was a huge deal to have a Lex Luger beat. And Lex Luger's brother um, had a group in Virginia, and it was from when before Lex was famous. And Lex was the producer of the um, group. He like produced all the beats for the group, and they rapped over them. And they came to me and they were like, yo, you know, we fuck with you. Like, let's work on some shit. And they came to me and they're like, yo, dog, like, we need that radio shit. Like, yeah, you but know, we need to yeah, but how, yeah, but, the rest of them. Yeah, but how did you get known? What's the story before that? How did you get known for them to hit you up? <laughs> oh, I'm getting there. Oh, okay. So, Lex Luger was making all the beats for Juicy J at the time for Rubber Band Business 1 and 2 yeah. when Juicy J was coming up and I guess in return for Lex doing beats with Juicy and stuff in order to help Lex's brothers group Juicy J was doing a mixtape with the group VABP which is Lex's brother and um, I, we made songs together and um, one of the, so I guess Juicy was like, uh, you know, send me what you guys have been working on and I'll hop on it and we can finish this mixtape. He heard um, the, um, sorry, sorry, I got distracted, it's all good. but anyway. So he heard the um, song and liked it so much. At the time, I was working as a uh, like Terminex pest control guy. Oh, really? I'm like on the way to work at like fucking seven a.m. <laughs> it's like three or four in the morning here in L.A. 
I get this call from Memphis, and I'm like, what the fuck? Who's calling me from Memphis this early? And I pick up the phone, and it's, uh, I just hear, yo, man, what up? Juicy J, 3 Six Mafia, you ever heard of me? And I'm like, I could just tell by the voice and the fact that it was a Memphis number. I was like, this is Juicy fucking J. And I was like, of course I heard of you. Like, I came up on you, bro. Like, you're a legend. Like, it was, and he was like, look, man, I heard your song, Rockstar Stone. He's like, uh, he's like, I, I want to throw a verse on that shit and shoot a video with it. And I was like, fuck you. God damn right. Yeah, like, but yeah, know. but how did you meet uh, Lex Luger? How did that come together? Um, because I worked with his brother's group. Oh, what well, was it, guys? Gr- you were growing to school with or something? No, we were just like rappers in the same city. Oh, just okay, gotcha. Networking with each other, and I was known as like, um. I guess you would say, like, on a local level, the same way you go to, like, Kid Leroy or Juice World or Bieber to get, like, a radio hook, you know? Like, if a rapper wanted to really cross over. Okay. I was, like, the guy I, a lot of the rappers would, you know, yeah. Because I guess you would say my sound is more radio-friendly. Okay, than, yeah, yeah. Like, underground rap yeah you know what most of them were doing yeah so after juicy called you what did you do you shot a video or what happened were you in the studio with him recording that track or like with this verse or he just sent you a verse yeah he asked me to send him a blank uh like a a version of the song with the blank verse yeah and like this was like the first celebrity i'd ever talked to or dealt with in my life Huh. You know, and so I just didn't know like how often I should text him. I didn't want to annoy him and blow the opportunity, and so I didn't push anything. I just let him come to me whenever he was ready, and um, and he so he like literally sent me the song back the same day. So I'm like, worst case scenario, I got a Juicy J feature. And that's that. Um, and like maybe like two, three months later, uh, same thing. I'm at work and it's like 1 p.m. or something like that. I call him and I'm like, oh shit, Juicy J's calling me. And I'm like, uh, what's up, dude? And he's like, he's like, yo, bro. He's like, I just landed in, uh, in Virginia, he's like, you ready to shoot this video? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, of course, you know? And uh, I'm thinking, like, he has this whole thing set up, and I'm just going to show up and shoot my part. And uh, he's like, he's like, all right, we need three things. We, we, need, uh, we need a studio to shoot in. We need a whole bunch of weed. And we need some bitches. <laughs> and I was like, all right, Juicy, I got you, bro. So, yeah, I arranged all that shit. And, um, you know, like all the homies and shit, we we're all kind of chilling at the studio, like waiting anxiously. Like, is Juicy J going to show up? Like, is he going to bail on us, you know? And, um, yeah, finally, about midnight, uh, we fucking get a knock at the door, and it's Juicy and his crew. And yeah, yeah, hold up. So, so at that time, he was having a fallout with DJ Paul, right? At that t- at the time. I don't know too oh. much about their personal okay, right. relationship. Okay, right. Jim, um, I I just know he was really really focused on building himself up. Just stand alone. Yeah. Outside of Three Six Mafia. Yeah, because later he had linked with Wiz Khalifa and made some really dope work, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 He ended up working with T God and all that stuff. Yeah. So, so what was it like that day at the studio? What what happened? That we shot the video. Yeah. He was just normal. 
I mean, Juicy J is Juicy J. He's a character. He's a lot of fucking fun. Uh, you know, we drank. We smoked a whole lot of fucking weed. We had some fun. And, um, you know, it was my first experience with um, a rapper of that caliber um, and things like that. And so I was over the moon. I thought it was dope. Um, and the, like the weird part is like, so we had the song on loop for like three hours and we basically just kind of like had a party and smoked weed and drank the whole time. And <laughs> like, I, I see the camera guy like putting away the fucking camera and I'm like, yo bro, like you never, uh, you never like got my part like, <laughs> what are we gonna do like our separate parts like I wanted to like rap to the camera like my verse and he's like and you know we were singing the song a little bit and he's like oh dude he's like I got plenty of footage man don't worry like you'll look great and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> I guess I guess that's how it works <laughs> um, to be honest the video video came out and I was like you definitely didn't get my part but um, yeah but that was shot by my boy Jay I, he, he's, he's the man I love him I, but yeah I think yeah he just wanted to get it done with and stuff so huh? I was just kind of like um, we're not doing like personal shots you know huh. but. So, so, what, uh, so what happened after that <clears throat> after that day um, you know, they edited the video and put it out, and it came out on World Star. And being on World Star at the time was pretty much like in the MTV of hip hop. Yeah, I remember those days. It was, it was kind of like a "Mama I Made It" moment. Oh yeah, and, and um, like uh. And then, honestly, it was like crickets, bro. I thought, like, this it would lead to this big thing. And to be honest, I mean, of course, it, I got some attention and stuff from it. But, like, it wasn't like it blew me up overnight. And I was like, okay, this is a sign that, like, I got a lot of work to put in. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, so I just kept my head down and, st and, and kept working. And uh, what songs no that's notable did you make between that time and Finesse and coming out? <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of stuff. I I I, let, I ended up getting signed when Island Def Jam eventually. I dropped. Wait, uh, just off that Juicy J track. No. Oh. Hey, bro. Let me um go some go somewhere. Yeah. This, it's like loud up in here. People are. Where's this here. noise coming from? Here. Sorry, it's like super it. throwing me off. Right. Yeah. So I was just wondering what what did, what how did you get signed? Like, what did they listen to to sign you? So, I had been in touch with some A&Rs from the industry, and I think a lot of them uh, believed in me, and, or believed in my writing, but they didn't know so much, like, what the fuck they would do with me as an artist. Because, you know, like, Lil Peep hadn't happened, Post Malone hadn't happened yet. Like, yeah. Things were a lot different then. So a kid like me was in a weird position because they knew, everyone knew there was something there. They just didn't know, like, how to market it. And there was nothing before it to, like, kind of model the marketing after. And um, so, yeah. So the way I ended up getting signed is... Um, like 
there was this uh, woman named um, Alicia Brooks, Majesty Brooks. She goes by Majesty. And, and um, she worked out of the studio I was working out of um, a lot. And um, she wrote that song, Hey, Mr. DJ, come on the replay. Would you turn the music up for Rihanna? Her, oh, her okay. Singles. No shit. She wrote that? Oh, wow. Yeah, and her first, her manager when she wrote that song was um, this guy named Chris Anacute, and he was the guy who um, had signed Katy Perry. Oh, uh, he really? He went on to sign Katy Perry after that, oh. and the dude I was trying to get to was um, Dr. Luke the guy I am signed to currently. Oh, um, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. The producer. Yeah. I wanted to get with Dr. Luke because um, I could tell, you know, he obviously had the pop shit on lock, but he was starting to do stuff with, like, Lil, like Lil Wayne and B.O.B., Strange Clouds and things. And I was like, yeah, this guy will understand what I'm trying to do with the whole, like, pop rap thing, you know? Yeah. And, um, so um yeah she told me she's like look i believe in you i want to help you she was like literally an angel sent from the sky <laughs> and like uh she was just like um so um i just want to help you succeed in every way i can so we were sending songs to chris the Katy perry guy in LA for like months dude and like I was to the point where I truly believed that like this guy was just like pulling her tail and like you know we'd send like song after song and it was just like like oh this is great bro keep sending man keep progressing nah. and I'm, I'm like bro like when am i uh, hold up hold up i had heard a lot of stories about dr luke is he a good guy oh uh, okay he's a great guy dude. Uh, okay cool all i've seen was untrue oh uh, okay um uh, anyone who knows him knows like that shit wasn't true yeah um, you know tmz of course posted the uh the headline that he was accused yeah we can of... skip over that it's all right yeah so yeah so, so how did you finally link with wayne like what how was that process how did that happen <clears throat> young money so, i ended up getting the deal with island def jam like i said um uh, and um for lack of better words, it just fucking didn't work out, dude. They they wanted me to go left. I wanted to no, go no, right. No, 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 no. Don't, don't say that. No, no, no. I want to know how did you first end up linking with them? Not what happened. No, just how I'm did you end up... You. What? I'm telling you. I'm oh, telling what happened? You. Um, and so I got out of my Island Dunk Jam deal. and Oh, um, why didn't that work out? It just didn't. They wanted me to be something I'm not. And so, well, what was the detail? Um, what did they... they... Okay, uh, just to be completely honest, uh, they told me that I was trying to be too black. Oh, uh, okay. And um, <laughs> so the irony of that is the first song I dropped after getting off of the label was Vanessent. And guess what blew up? Uh, oh so, but oh but you said you're still with Dr. Luke now, right? What did he change labels? Are you a different label? No, Dr. Luke is my publisher. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah, like like um I'm signed to him as like a producer and a writer. Gotcha, okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah. how did that how did Little Wayne get involved? Like did he hear your song or how did that happen? Yeah, so Vanessa comes out, it's like going crazy, like million plays first fucking day type shit. Like, we're, we're, like, it shit was going crazy on the internet. And, um, like, 
bro, every fucking rapper and hip hop was messaging me, you know what I mean? Like, are you signed? Do you have a manager? What's going on? Like, and I was just kind of like, I just got out of that big major deal. And I was like, I'm not trying to get back into a deal. And, you know, unless it's worth a lot of money. So, and, uh, so did, did you write that song completely yourself? Yeah. Was it pretty easy yeah. to come up with? I wouldn't say easy, but I would say natural. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering, were you allegedly moving birds on the throughway like the song or no? <laughs> uh yeah, dude. I just got off probation for four years. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can look up my charges. Um heroin sales. Um, oh, okay. At least that's what they got me for. I mean it's nothing I wanna brag about or glorify, but yeah, I definitely have lived everything I rap about. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, so what? Is, so I thought you were like signed to Young Money at the time. Like, what happened? No, I dropped Finesse and Independently. Oh, and, okay. Um, yeah, I just started getting this call from this guy named Petey, and like every picture of his on Instagram was like him on a private plane with Wayne or him like hanging out with Nicki Minaj or Drake. And I knew he was involved with Young Money somehow, but I didn't know like in what capacity. And uh, we talked for a few days and uh, eventually I was like, look dude, like, you know, you keep saying Wayne loves me this, Wayne can't wait to meet me that, like, if Wayne's so excited about me, tell Wayne to call me, you know? And until yeah. then, like, we don't really got much to talk about. He was like, oh, you trying to pull my card, bro? He's from New Orleans, you know? Yeah. We got that accent. He's like, you trying to pull my car? He's like, hold up, whoa. He's like, give me 10 minutes. And I get a fucking FaceTime. And uh, it's just like, all I see on the FaceTime is just like, you could obviously someone was just holding a phone and the camera was pointing upward you know <laughs> and I'm like uh, hello you know and, um, <laughs> I just hear like like somebody hitting a blunt and I can see the smoke and I'm like what the fuck is going on and Lil Wayne just fucking like looks into the phone and he goes it's real enough for you white boy <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's real enough. And he just went, boop, 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 and hung up. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. And from there, uh, we ended up planning a trip that we met in uh, L.A. And, uh, you know, we vibed. And, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. Did, yeah, but did you uh, did you go to Miami to work with them, or was it just uh, in L.A.? Because it, I think he was probably living in Miami at the time, right? And was uh, was Rich Homie Quan or uh, Young Thug around at that time? No, they were never around. Oh, uh, okay. Because um, Lil Wayne's Young Money, and they were involved with Cash Money. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And this was... Um, I was involved with Wayne during the time when him and Birdman weren't getting along. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And so, like, it was kind of crazy because, uh, like, basically, once I signed with Young Money, uh, like, they basically were just like, all right, you're with us now. And everywhere Wayne went, like, I went for, like, two years, pretty much. Uh, if he was on tour, I was on tour with him. Like, if he was in Miami, like, uh. Young Money moves as a big unit, you know? And, um, so, yeah, that's, that's, um, Was anybody yeah, else we around? Were... Like, Nicki Minaj, Drake, Tyga, anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All the time. Oh, All really? The time. Huh. Yeah. Huh. What's some stories yeah. about being with Nicki or Drake? Were you in the stew with him? Um, no, 
Adams. I was never in the stew and Nikki or Drake. I met uh, Nikki very briefly. And um, she's just cool, funny, sassy chick. You know what I mean? Like, um, and uh, Jersey was like, I don't know. Drizzy seems to have this like constant, super mischievous like vibe about him where you can tell he's just like planning like pranks and shit all the time. I don't know. Huh. So, uh, I don't know. It was cool. I, I, I met him like, I got to know Wayne really well, but you know, Nikki and Drake are so deep in their careers that they don't necessarily hang around with Wayne and shit all the time. Like, you know, when we'd cross paths, we'd all hang out and say, Hey, but other than that, it wasn't like, you know, um, continuously hanging out with Drizzy or something. What was it like to be with them? Like do with little Wayne and stuff Were you shocked that you were like actually with some superstars. <clears throat> Nah. Uh, okay. Nah, I'd been around a bunch of superstars at that point. Okay, so how was it with Lil Wayne? Because I had heard, like, he was having seizures sometimes and shit, like, in his private jet, like, he actually missed some shows or this and that. Was he ever, did he ever have a seizure around you? Uh, around me, but he's epileptic. Yeah. And it, it pisses me off because people are like, He's drinking too much lean. He overdosed. It's like shut the fuck up. He's got epilepsy, you assholes. Like yeah. Fucking. So he yeah. would pass out every once in a while for a few minutes, and then he would come back. Well, yeah, that's what epilepsy is. Okay, it's yeah, I didn't a, know how often, but yeah, okay. It's a seizure. It's huh. a seizure disease. You can't yeah. help it. How you was it? Yeah. How... Uh, what did what did Little Wayne say to you when you first met him? I'm just wondering. He liked your song, obviously, but what did he say? Wayne is a fucking enigma, bro. Like Wayne is like really hard to figure out, and I don't know if you ever could figure him out. Um, but um, what's crazy is uh, we didn't meet in person until uh, we were shooting the video for Finessin and you know they put big red X's on the ground for you to like show you where to stand when they're shooting the shot yeah and first time we met is um, they pulled me over and they're like all right we need you on your X so I'm like okay standing on my ex and they're like Wayne your ex is right there and I look over and Wayne's like two feet away from me and he just looks at me and he's like he's like you ready baby and I was like yeah I was like I'm <laughs> ready and he's like let's go so yeah I don't, like to be honest I was expecting us to build more of a rapport maybe prior to shooting a video together because because like when we were shooting and stuff I wasn't sure if I was able to put my arm around him yeah. or like you know like I didn't want to piss him off uh, and ruin the shoot but uh, we got through it and it was cool yeah so what So what did Little Wayne say his plan was for you was he trying to turn you into another Drake or because or, I know Drake was making a lot of money for him at the time but what, did he, what was his plan for you like what did he say to you um, well, uh, I think Finesse and Wet Iverson came out at yeah. pretty much the same time. Yeah. So I think, um, maybe their plan wasn't to, like, be like Post but or anything like that, but, like, you know, kind of be like the YM Post Malone, you know, oh. the YM, the white boy, you know? Yeah, did you ever write for any of those guys at Young Money or no? Yeah, I wrote for Wayne a lot, actually. Oh, really? No <laughs> shit, what did you write for Wayne? Uh, a lot of stuff, dude, a lot of stuff. A lot of a lot songs? Of oh, wow. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
okay. The weird thing about Wayne, bro, is he makes like about 20 songs a day. And I think um, he makes so much music that he forgets like what's really fire and what's not. And so, like, when it comes time to make an album, he could have, like, six months of just straight bangers to choose from. But they feel old to him. And so he'll yeah. spend two we- the next two weeks making an album <laughs> to turn in when he could really just go through his fucking catalog and, like, pick a bunch of bangers and drop them. I always thought that was, like, a strange working process. You know, because for me, I I make a lot of music, and not all of it's good, you know, or worthy of putting out. Yeah. So there, there's the songs I put to the side where I'm like, I want to put this stuff out. And there's the songs that are like, eh, not my best, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know. Sometimes I wish I could, like, just get like a list of Wayne songs and uh, like pick an album for him you know what I mean? yeah like an A&R <laughs> yeah but he, you know he's got great people around him and he's an artist and you know he, he chooses his own work and huh. so if that's the music he wants to put out then that's the music he puts out so yeah so so what did he say about about your writing and stuff and, and your songs did he like what you do obviously and uh, and and like so what happened with that why was a why was there a falling out um <clears throat> uh, there was never a falling out you know um we're still family like i still talk to mac on a not on a regular basis. Not I wouldn't say daily, but I still talk to Mac Main on a regular basis. Uh, just to keep it a buck, I think my situation was kind of similar to Tyga, where they, um, you know, they signed me, they gave me a platform, and gave me wings to fly with, and we're kind of like, you know, now it's your turn to boss up and do what you want with it. And uh, Mac Main was my manager, and uh, I just called him and told him, you know, I love you guys. I'll be young money forever. It's tattooed on my skin, but um, I want more for myself. You know what I mean? Like, and um, Mac was like, well, you know, I believe in you more than anyone. And as someone who loves you, I want what's best for your career. So. If you think, uh, you know, moving on and doing your own thing is is the right choice, and I support you in that. Huh, so, it, yeah. Uh. Yeah. People have this weird, like, obsession with the fact they think we, like, fell out or I got dropped by Young Money, and it, it was never anything like that. It was just I felt like my career was stagnant, and I wanted to explore other options. Um did so, they? Uh, did you have your own publishing, or were they taking your publishing? And do you have any problem getting paid? Because I know that was an issue around that time. Or did you always get paid? No, like my publishing's through Doctor Lou. Oh, okay. Um, and when Young Money came to me, they were like, um, you know, we want to work with you, but um, we're not going to do it without any paperwork because we've had artists that we've brought around who get the clout um kind of like kevin gates at one point you know Uh, he was like signed to young money and we're in young money and i'm the new young money artist and they hadn't had done they hadn't done paperwork yet and him and wayne ended up getting in an argument in the studio um and he flew to uh la the next day and signed to atlantic so uh to prevent that they were just like you know we don't we're not gonna make anything and i was like well look i just got out of a major label deal and if the owner of the label um can't release music then it doesn't make sense for me as a new artist to sign the young money like um 
your guys' whole marketing scheme right now is free C5. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I told Mac, I said, I don't have a manager right now, so um, you could be my manager and, you know, take 20% of my career, and that way we have official paperwork and – uh, you know, so that's how that's how we ended up structuring the business of that. Cool. Is, uh, uh, did, did you ever yeah. meet with uh, Birdman at all, or no? Yeah, briefly, briefly. Oh, okay. What what were your talks with him? How was he? Uh, we were just in a club setting. It was just a simple dap up. Hey, how you doing? Uh, it was a weird time because, you know, like, uh, I would be, like, Wayne would bring me out every night and let me perform Vanessa and while he was on stage. And, like, it was, like, every night as soon as the song was done, he'd be like, this is my new Young Money artist, blah, 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 blah. And then go into this whole, like, fuck cash money records rant like yeah. well i am no cmb bitch like when i say fuck y'all say bird man and I mean, like um i'm not an yeah i'm not saying this. that like, <laughs> <laughs> so uh it was uh it was kind of awkward i think they were kind of repairing the relationship when i knew wayne and um you know, a lot of people don't really consider this, but, you know, Birdman was Wayne's father figure since he was eight years old. And uh, Mac Main is actually Birdman's blood nephew. Oh, uh, okay. So it, it's it's like, Wayne, it's like family ties. Yeah, they go you know? deep. Yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. Way deep, way, way back. Yeah, and, I know, I know uh, a good amount of the story. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. So so uh so how did uh the remix come together with uh Kevin Gates and Lil Bibby? You ever get to meet Lil Bibby? Yeah, many times. Many okay. Times. What what were you talks with him cuz I know he's a real boss now, man. Like he's he's worth a lot and he's he's uh he owns his own record label and stuff. Like went on to do Juice World and lots of other people, but what what was it yeah, like the, meeting him? The guy who signed me, Dr. Luke, is the guy who signed Lil Bibby. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. So is Lil Bibby's so, label through Dr. Luke or something? Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, I see. I see, I, I thought... I, what's I up? believe. I don't know exactly how their business is structured, but I know Dr. Luke was super instrumental in, uh, you know, Bibby Working with becoming, Lil Bibby. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So what uh, were your talks with Lil Bibby? Honestly, man, he's he's a stone cold fucking Chicago guy, man. Like, yeah, he's super young and like really about his shit. He just sits in the corner like this and don't really say shit, and it's just kind of like, yeah, man, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that, that ain't cool, <laughs> you know. <laughs> It, it you would th you would think there's maybe not a lot going on up there, but there's a lot going on up there. I think he's just a quiet guy. Yeah, I can tell he's a smart dude. <laughs> yeah, he's one of those dudes who doesn't really speak unless it's worthy of hearing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, uh -huh. He doesn't talk just to talk, like. So yeah. And, and, uh, you know, when I was meeting him, he was so new to the industry. Like, he had just been plucked from the Chicago streets. Yeah. So, I don't think he quite understood, like, he's safe in the, in the industry. Like, you're in a private studio with a bunch of nerdy white guys. Like, yeah. like n nobody's going <laughs> to run in here with guns, bro. Like, we're not in Chicago. Like... <laughs> So I think it took him a while to like loosen up a little bit and realize like he's not in the same danger in the environment he was in previously. You know? Yeah, I've 
I've heard him in an interview saying he was pretty scarred from that environment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Like I said, he he doesn't talk much. I don't know. I would say um, you can you can see pain behind the eyes for sure. Yeah. So how many tracks did you get to do with Lil Wayne? Was it a ton or was it only like a few? You got a lot of unreleased shit with him? Dude, yeah. It's really um, sad to me that um, we have so much great music that I'll never see the light of day. Yeah, Lil Wayne's stack of, stash of music must be just incredible. Like how many stuff he's got that he didn't release because he makes so much music. Yeah, like I said, he makes about 20 songs a day, bro. Yeah. That's really crazy. Really in the studio. So, who yeah. knows? Who yeah. Knows? Yeah, um, I saw on your uh, Instagram you had a picture of uh, Travis Barker. you ever get to work with him? Yeah. Oh, what did you end up making with him? Because I haven't heard any songs. What did you do? I worked with Travis many years ago long before he was doing the like pop punk revival thing with MGK and everybody um you know at the time I worked with Travis he was doing kind of like uh boom bap beats yeah uh, was it with uh, DJ AM because I remember those days no no no, no. it's after that oh okay uh, we, we just met you know Speaking of like being starstruck, Travis Barker was the only person I was ever starstruck by, bro. Like, like when we had our session, uh, I was so fucking nervous, dude. Like, have you ever been so nervous where you're like trying to stand up and your like knees are buckling and shit? <laughs> like, I was like in the booth trying to record, and I'm like fucking shaking out of because of nerves and i remember like the session ends and like i'm like hey like travis can like we have like uh a uh, like selfie together and he's like yo like of course bro like chill out it's just a picture <laughs> like <laughs> he was a super nice guy he didn't make me feel like a jerk like or anything but um, I was just so fucking starstruck that I don't know. What songs did you end up making with them? Uh, nothing that was released. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, was it some hip hop shit or what was it? Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. Um, I'm not I'm not a real big fan, but I know a lot of people out there are. But you ever get to work with Lil Peep? in person um we facetime a few times we followed each other on twitter we talked with each other and he was a big fan of me i was a big fan of him um we made songs together um by sending tracks back and forth together um, they're on youtube someone leaked them like an asshole okay um and um yeah it was super sad man we were you know we had made mentions of doing an ep together when he came home from the tour he was on and i was sitting on fucking instagram one day and um you know i've been around a lot of drugs and stuff my whole life and i've unfortunately seen people od and i remember showing my girl the video and being like is it just me or does he look like overdosed and like oh. dead right there oh, that's crazy um, my girl's like oh you know he does look pretty like fucked up and slumped but you know his friends wouldn't let him just sit there dead and be videotaping him and sure enough I was right dude that's Two crazy hours later start seeing R.I.P. Peep on Twitter and I was I don't know I was one of the few artists that really, really bothered me, man. Huh. I, I feel, I feel like he had a good, pure soul, and um, Come on. yeah, yeah. Rest in peace. Uh, I forgot to mention. Rest what did Travis peace. Barker say to you? He you liked your music. What did he say? Yeah, I 
I mean, dude, he's still a fan to this day. Oh, okay. Every time he sees me or, you know, my name comes up, he's just like, baby, he's so talented. Tell him I said what's up, you know. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, huh. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably reconnect soon. Um, it's just, you know, schedules are so busy and things like that. So. Cool. Huh. I, I forgot to mention, you ever uh, link with NBA Youngboy or talk to him at all? No. All right, he wasn't around at that time. Okay. No, but I've heard some fucking funny ass crazy stories about him. Why? What happened? Um. So he was in L.A. one time, and um, he bought a monkey, like a spider monkey, and thought bringing spider monkey to the session was a grand idea and uh, from what I've heard uh, like NBA, NBA young boy shows up to the studio with like 20 guys and plays his music like if the knob could go to like 11 he would turn it to 11 like <laughs> you know he plays his music full volume and so he's got this poor monkey like on his shoulder and like the music is loud as fuck everybody's smoking blunts and this monkey like freaks the fuck out and starts like climbing all over the speakers in the studio and shitting everywhere and throwing like monkey shit everywhere and like uh, I don't know that's crazy Funny NBA young boy lore that gets uh, passed around uh, LA. I meant to ask you, were you ever with Little Wayne at all on his jet or any other times when you thought shit would go left? Because it seems like a pretty crazy figure, you know what I mean? What do you mean? Like, were you ever with Little Wayne on his jet or or other times when you thought shit could go left? Because it seems pretty crazy. Or not really. <laughs> What do you mean my shit could go left? Well, like, I don't know, like, um, like probably three years ago or something, he got caught with a gun and all this shit. I'm not saying that, but I meant, like, did he ever fly off the handle or get mad at someone you thought there was going to be a fight or some crazy shit? Oh, yeah. Constantly. Oh, okay. The what? Wayne doesn't, like, move without a gun. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> Like he has a pistol and a blunt in his hand, hands at all times. <laughs> uh, like I'll put it this way, um, we were on tour, going north back up through Texas, and um, you know how they have those like drug checkpoints. Yeah. When when you travel back up through Texas to yeah. make sure you're not like hauling drugs yeah. from Mexico. <laughs> Um, like, so we pull over at this rest stop and all the bus drivers tell us to get off the buses and they're like, look, in about 30 minutes, we're going to hit a, uh, um, checkpoint and there's a high probability they're going to stop us and pull us to the side of the road and bring dogs aboard. So any weed you guys want to smoke any drugs you got you want to do and get rid of like um or any guns you guys want to stash or get rid <laughs> of like and so all these motherfuckers the entire tour made the decision to throw away all of their drugs but to keep all the machine guns and the <laughs> and P90s and pistols. And I'm like, what the fuck? And so uh, <laughs> I, I took all the, my drugs and just like, you know, cheeked them and put them up my ass, but like <laughs> between my cheeks. And I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, all right, like if we get stopped and like the buses get gone through, like, they're going to be worried about the guns. They're not going to care about the drugs in my butt cheeks. Like, and uh, luckily enough, uh, when we stopped, you know, Lil Wayne came up to the window and was like, what's up, man? You know, and so they waved us through. But I say that just to say an example of, like, you know, 
they they kept the guns on the bus and threw away the drugs. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, what the fuck? You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. But, like, yeah, luckily, nothing happened. Huh. So... Um, were you ever with them? Did you ever go out of the country at all to tour? Or no, just the United States. Uh, no, no, we never went out of the country. Oh, uh, okay. Um, what, what, uh, what happened like when you left uh, Young Money, and how did you end up? Uh, what happened in between leaking with Juicy J again? Like, like, uh, what did you work on and stuff, and how, how did that all come? In, you know, what happened with that? Um. So after the thing happened with Young Money, that whole thing, and I told Mac, you know, I love you. I just, you know, you got other opportunities arising, and I want to be able to take them. Uh, I did a deal with Empire Records and Dr. Luke. Oh. Uh, Dr. Luke signed me as an artist, uh, and it was like a 50-50 deal with Empire Records. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's what you know Trapper of the Year and you know Trapping for a Living and Here Comes the Rain and that whole line of singles that came out came out under that label cool yeah so so uh, you ended up working with Juicy J then uh, you have a, a few songs with him you have probably three or four or something but how'd those come together Dude, like I said, Juicy was just the first person to ever fuck with me. Like, uh, he's always been, like, literally, like, taking care of me almost like family, like an uncle since since day one. Cool. I remember being a young kid and calling him crying one day because I was so tired of my job and the life I was living. I was just like, bro, like, I can't do this anymore. Like, like I don't know. I'm, I'm not meant to do this. Hmm. And, you know, he was nice. And he offered me a deal at the time. And, um, like, I was going to take it. And luckily, the girl who ended up getting me signed to the Katy Perry guy, she was like, look, you know, I appreciate Juicy trying to help you and whatnot, but like, you know, bigger deals are on the horizon. I really think you should wait this out. Hmm. Was uh, was so, Juicy cooking up the beats in the studio for you at all? Because I know he's a really good producer. No. no, no Juicy's never cooked up beats for me. Uh, the way we've always worked is I've always just had a song ready for him and he came in and did his first and that was kind of that okay okay gotcha but we've been talking a lot lately and um i've been sending him loops like beat loops and um uh, he told me he's like um preparing like a bunch of studio time and we're gonna be working a bunch together once that happens so yeah, a lot more baby and Juicy J huh. coming. What's your favorite uh, song you did with Wayne and with Juicy, and why? Favorite song I did with Wayne and Juicy. Um, I would say my favorite song with Juicy would be the last one, last one I released. The Diamonds, Diamonds one. In the sky. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's kind of not really rap. It's kind of more like pop, right? That's what it kind of sounds like to me. That's what you want to call it. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. How come you transitioned to like less rap, more kind of like pop? Why did you do that? Because that's what you like? I, I, I was never, I never was a rap artist. I never did rap. Oh, yeah. I know. But more singing. And, okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. It just has a different if vibe you, to me. Yeah. If you if you go back through my entire catalog, there's a consistency of, you know, melody and singing through the whole thing. I was never a rapper. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just sounded a little different, but yeah. Uh, what's your favorite song with uh, Wayne, and why? Um, it's one that's unreleased. 
And it's just because it's fucking so fire. Huh. It's called Girls from the Hills. Huh. Yeah. So, so how was Wayne when you were in the studio with him? He would just, he would just go in and freestyle, like, right off his head, pretty much, and just like get it done in three minutes or a couple of minutes or was he uh, writing everything down yeah. or you don't write shit oh yeah yeah uh, I would say his process um, you know he'll do like two to four bars at a time and then like stop and uh, hear it back and yeah. by the time he hears those four bars, he thinks of four new ones and just adds on to it until it becomes a complete verse. Yeah. What's, what's your favorite album that you made uh, from yourself or your favorite EP that you've done and, and why? <clears throat> your best work. Um, it was technically a mixtape, but it was called Kill the Noise. And... Um, I just feel like it was the most, it's my, I don't know, it's my favorite body of work. Uh, I feel like it was really well-rounded and had a lot of great songs on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard a few tracks like on it. I haven't listened to the whole thing yet, but I'll, I'll check it out, definitely. You know, I feel like that was really a you know, um, great song there, musically. Hmm. Yeah. Um, would you, now that you're a little older since when you first started, would you have done anything different with your career and, and with Young Money and why? Yeah, for sure. Um, first things first, I would have, um, like, not saying I'm broke in any way, shape, or form, but like, I would have definitely not tried to have keep up with the Joneses as much yeah you know? um, and um, you know I would get really large checks and think like these are just gonna come forever like you know like I'm rich now like I hit the lottery and the truth of the matter is is like um, when you're really hot the checks are big and you know they start to tail off a little bit sometimes and uh when uh i don't know if you create a lifestyle that requires a certain amount of income yeah and then when you're not making that certain income any longer um it's like it's hard you know uh at one point, I was living in a house that was, the rent was $8,500. I also had a separate apartment that was like $1,400 a month. Uh, just stupid shit, man. Yeah. I'd swipe my car and spending like two to $500 a day on weed. Yeah. Um, and one, on, I guess... One thing I would have done different is definitely uh, stayed away from drugs. Hmm. Yeah. Um, what's some advice that uh, that Juicy and Wayne gave you? What, what did they tell you? Um, Wayne really um, instilled in me to just like um trust my instincts and to just be really proud of who I am like like be proud of the fact of who I am like don't ever let anyone take my power away um like you know even if the whole world's like that shit sucks like if you like that song then that song's fire and and um one thing Juicy taught me is um, is to always, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a good way to explain it. Like, um, just be solid to your homies over the years, you know? Everybody's shit comes in waves. And, like, 
um, you know, somebody might not be on top of the world right now, but uh, I guess it's like the way you treat someone who can't do something for you is like a sign of your character and who you really are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like don't fuck with people just because they're going to help your career. Like, fuck with them because you fuck with them. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good advice. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. What, what, uh, oh yeah, how was it working with, uh, Kim Petrus? Hope I'm pronouncing her name right. I think she's from the UK, right? Yeah, she's German. Oh, okay. Originally. Okay. How was it working with her? Because I know you made a few songs. Dude, it, she, it was amazing. She's a superstar. Um, and it was crazy. I, I got in really early on her project. Um, I got a call from Dr. Luke one day. He's like, yo, dude, I just signed this girl, Kim Petrus, from Germany. Um, and, like, like... He's like, I think it's going to be big. Like, I really want you to be a part of this. And I'm like, okay, cool, you know. And uh, sure enough. <laughs> huh. So how did that come together? Like, what was the process like for those songs you made? Like, uh, you know, what, what was that uh, like, the just... hills and stuff? <clears throat> um... Okay, so the hills, they had the hook on that, and they needed verses. So, um, I wrote, I wrote Kim's verse with her, and they were like, well, I like did the reference to kind of, sh cause she's German, so she kind of, she was so fresh, she didn't so much understand the lingo as much yet oh and, okay because uh, she didn't know english is that what it is she knows english very well but not like american rap english you know oh, okay like she doesn't understand like rhyming like someone might say like like close the door you're on the floor and like I would have to explain to her, like, close the dough, hit the flow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, okay. Just a little weird, like, shit like that. Yeah, the beat's yeah, nasty in that. She's a superstar. Her uh, voice. Yeah, the beat's nasty in that song. Did you make that beat or no? No, no. Oh, okay. Uh, Luke and this guy, Aaron, pretty much produced every single song for her. Oh, okay. How was she in the studio? She was pretty easy to work with? Very easy. Oh, okay. Did they? I was wondering. I was wondering. Did Doctor Luke give you like topics of songs, or the or like what he wanted to promote in the songs, or 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 were you kind of just coming up with everything from your own head? Um, my own head. Oh yeah. Doctor Luke um is a very big proponent of just make shit. Oh know, yeah. If it's dope. Um, cool. And if not, we move on and make more shit. Oh, cool. <laughs> like, Did he also work with Katy Perry or no? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. He, he was, like, not only he worked with her, he was, like, the guy behind most of her success. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I could see, I could draw parallels between them. Okay, cool. So I was going to ask you, in in the land of smoke and mirrors, who surprised you when you met them and why? Like, like who was kind of different in person than you thought they would be in your head, and why? Um, I would say Juicy J. Because, um, you know, in his music, uh, I'm not saying he doesn't party and doesn't do certain drugs but like uh, the the content and the material in his music like like for instance when I first met him I imagined 
he was gonna land and like pull out a suitcase with like every drug ever and be like, "Take your pick, man. We getting trippy, <laughs> man." Yeah. yeah, but he's not like that like, in real life, <laughs> right? And this whole idea built up of like, you know, and he definitely smokes a bunch of weed and stuff, and you know, he might party when it's the right time, but like. Just the way he rapped, uh, I don't know. I figured he would be much more of a wild card than he was, but he's a lot more about his business. And, um, and you know, I found that with, like, 99, like, you can't function on that high of a level and do a ton of drugs. It's just not yeah, yeah. feasible. Yeah, I thought that, because Juicy J is a businessman, yeah, for sure. Um, there's nothing wrong with that you know yeah like uh future kind of surprised me i would say future yeah yeah i know future doesn't do any drugs right yeah yeah and the yeah. way he raps like you would think you know this motherfucker is a damn near a heroin addict yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah what it yeah what it what, what happened when you met him like what what was that like um, there was this guy named Detail who was on Molly and Mushrooms and jumping on the tables in the studio and singing the song at the top of his lungs and like <laughs> fucking just spazzing. And Future was just like in the corner with shades on, just fucking <laughs> cool. And you could tell he was just like in the music, you know. <laughs> But who knows? He could be popping perks on the low or his hand, you know. Yeah. Drugs drugs aren't always like a super obvious thing. Yeah. Well, that's what I've heard too. I think I think you're right. He's probably not. But yeah, it, yeah. Um, like, like same thing with Juicy. I'm sure he has his fun from time to time. Yeah. But like. Uh, yeah, he's definitely not like doing Molly and Percocet on a daily basis. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, DJ Paul had said that during recording that sipping on some scissor, Dade almost died making that song. That's what he said, but yeah. But um, who? Why? Because they sip so much scissor. Oh yeah, he said that. He said his like liver was about to go out in an interview. He said he almost died. Yeah. He said yeah. That's why he doesn't even drink, he said. DJ Paul, yeah. But anyway... Um, coding, coding doesn't even affect your liver. Yeah, but he said he almost died from drinking so much syrup. I don't know. There's something in there that's not good. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but... That's what he had said. Nah, bro. You don't die from syrup, bro. I'll find the interview. I'll send you that. Cocaine. Yeah. If I find the interview, I'll send it to you. Oh, yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, it could be wrong, but... Yeah, who would you like to work with that you've never worked with, like either a rapper or producer? But it seems like you've worked with pretty much damn near everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, the last two to scratch off of my list are Eminem and Max Martin. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Huh. Who's your go-to producers that you like for your music, or you pretty much do your own? There's this guy named Zandy, um, Zandy Barry, and he was the guy who uh, helped me finish up um, finessing, and he helped me finish up champagne, he helped me finish up a lot of what I believe is my greatest records, and I think he brings the best out of me. Um, uh, he's uh he's just like a true friend like one time i i crashed on a motorcycle going about 50 60 miles an hour and i had to have surgery i broke my entire left side and like he talked to me right before i had went into surgery and he was like how are you getting home from surgery and i was like oh i'm just gonna take an uber 
and he's like bro you don't take an uber home from a surgery that like that <laughs> like what are you talking about and i'm like well i don't you know i don't have anyone else to call at the time and you know he called the hospital and hunted me down and found out when i was coming out of surgery and you know, I woke up out of surgery to him pushing me in a wheelchair. Um, so, I don't know. He's just a great guy. And um, I hate to say it, but he's a little bit older. He's been in the game a while. And he just has skills that a lot of the younger crowd doesn't. Hmm. Um, do you yeah. like uh, weed? What's your favorite strand? Uh, I love weed. Um, I love heavy indicas. I'm a big heavy indica guy. Oh, okay. Is there a particular brand you like over in Cali or? Um, Alien Labs puts out some pretty dope stuff. I mean, it's always changing. There's, uh, you know, there's always a new brand and, you know, hmm. uh, Cool. What's your uh, quick? Just what's your top five rappers, producers, and movies? Like, uh, just people you haven't worked with. Like, who would that be? So people can get to know you a little bit. Um, like my top five rappers. Yeah, people you look up to or you like. Um, or it could be people in music you like. You know, that you haven't worked with. Or that you like, you know? Definitely Max Martin. Do you know who Max Martin is? I I haven't actually heard of him, but, you know, there's a lot of people. I Maybe I've heard their music, but I don't remember. But, yeah. I'm going to have to okay. check him out. I'm going to have to so, check him out. Since NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, Christina Aguilera, and Britney Spears, that whole era. Yeah. Since there to now, he's made pretty much every song you hear on the radio. Oh wow! Okay. Like last two weekend albums, like he wrote them all. Oh wow! Taylor okay. Swift albums. Oh like, wow! He has more number ones than like, like <laughs> all of his competition combined. Oh okay, okay, gotcha. Like yeah, and I love how humble and low key he is about it. Like the the first time I met him, um, I was like, "What's up, dude?" I was like, "What's your name?" He's like, "Max." You know, he's Swedish. He's got a Swedish accent. And I'm like, uh, when I first moved to LA, like my icebreaker would be like, uh, "So like, who have you worked with? Like, you know, have you like, what are some big cuts that you're proud of?" And I was like, I was like, you got any big cuts that you're like proud of or anything, man? And he just like kind of smiled at me and was like, I was like, yeah, I've done a few things. I've done a few cool things. And like, so he walks away and my buddy walks up. He's like, bro, he's like, Max talked to you. He was like, what did Max say to you? And I was like, um, I asked him if he's ever done any big songs. And he was like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> like, it'd be like me, like, it would be the equivalent of like meeting St Steven Spielberg and him being like, yeah, I'm a director. And you being like, cool, like, what's, <laughs> you, you worked on any like big movies? Oh, uh, okay. He'd be like, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a few, buddy. That's funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Oh man, who's some producers you like their music? Um, Max Martin, Doctor Luke, obviously I'm partial to him. Um, some producers. So does Doctor Luke actually cook up beats and stuff, or cook up music? Does he do? Does he do that, or does he have oh, other yeah. people? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. One thing Doctor Luke's really great at is. Uh, putting the right people in the right room together at the right time. Oh, uh, okay. Um, 
but he's definitely still very, um, no pun intended, instrumental in the music making um, and vocal production and just studio magic that goes along with, you know, okay. making, making that stuff. Gotcha. Cool, I can tell. Um, what's some of your favorite movies that you like? Top five. <laughs> um, time. I love um, trying to think of like like just pretty much everything Tom Hardy man hmm. like, I, don't know, I guess you could say I have like a man crush on Tom Hardy oh. not a man crush but I just think his acting is brilliant uh, other than that Leo Wolf of Wall Street. Oh yeah, I think Leo's brilliant. Um, yeah, I don't know. He kind of caught me off guard with that one. It's all good. Like, but yeah, hmm. yeah, I love film. I love cool. Film. What do you got? Uh, where where do you see yourself in a year? And uh, what projects you got in the works right now? Um. Or where would you video. like to be in a year? What's up? I'm shooting a video for uh, Diamonds in the Sky. Oh, really? Um, okay. On the 19th. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, the plan is just keep pushing forward, making things happen. That's all you can really do is, um, you know, keep pushing, bro, making art, releasing art. And uh, if the fans like it, great. But, you know, I've always said, like, even if I never made a dime doing this, if I never got one play, like, I would do music regardless. Like, yeah. Um, like, the same way people sit there and play Call of Duty for 10 hours a day. Like, yeah. That's, like, same thing with me in music. It, it, it never gets old. What's, the, what's your favorite song you made that's out right now that that people could listen to and that you like the best oh man that's a hard one um I mean I guess obviously there's Vanessa but um I like Here Comes the Rain a lot I think that's a beautiful song I got a song called 27 that's like really special to me uh, so yeah probably, I'd probably go with like 27 cool cool um, do you have any merch or anything any people can get not at the moment but I'm talking to a few merch companies and working out merch deals and things like that so. cool cool yeah. um Anything else you want to say to the people? And uh, list your socials, too. Like, your social uh, contacts so people can uh, follow you. Yeah, I appreciate you having me, dude. It was good to meet you. Um, in case y'all missed it, I'm Baby E. And um, all my socials are at iBabyE. Like, I-B-A-B-Y-E. Uh, my TikTok is at the baby e. Um, YouTube, if you just type in baby e, my channel will come up. So, yeah, I'm not hard to find. If you just Google baby e, it'll all come up. Cool, cool. And um, thank you for doing this interview with me. It was fun talking to you. And you too, um, bro. yeah, thanks cool. for having me. Definitely. Can you? Uh, you mind giving me a shout out? It's uh, TM as in trademark NYC. So TM NYC. Yo, what up? It's your boy, Baby E. I want to shout out my boy, TMNYC. Gang. Appreciate it, man. And um, yeah. is everything in this interview okay to put out? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, Baby E. I wish you much continued success. And uh, when you get ready to drop an album or something, hit me up. I'll feature you again, all right? Same to you, bro. Thank you, brother. And w w yeah, can I put... Success. Definitely. Can I put uh, you in you in uh, L.A., California, or you want me to put California, or where do you want me to put that you're at? <clears throat> yeah, I'm in L.A. Okay, cool. So. Awesome. Awesome, brother.
I wish you the best, brother. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate it. You too, bro. God bless you. Thank you very much. Yep, you're God welcome. Bless. Thank awesome. you.